Coming up, Normal University Pioneers against the Madison Trojans. It's game two of our IHSA Class A Boys Basketball Tournament. Don't forget, coming up following the game you're watching, we're going to have more high school basketball action coming your way tonight on Sports Channel Plus. Williamsfield taking on Lone Chicago Area Entry St. Francis de Sales at 645. That game is followed by Nokomis at Warsaw shortly after 8 o'clock and again only live on Sports Channel Plus. And once again, the key to watching Sports Channel Plus, call your local cable operator or provider to see how you can get Sports Channel Plus in your area. Coming up, it's time for basketball. We're going to send back you down to uh, Peoria for the call. Stay with us here. Game two, right around the corner. The country companies knows that starting a family is no small feat. So the least we could do is start giving you a break with mini rates on most minivans. When it matters most, the country's behind you. Dials your last caller. Touch star 69. It's already on your line. You want my boys to come over? How soon? Now you could win a new Ford Explorer. Use star 69 during the Ameritech. It's automatic sweepstakes, and you're automatically entered to win. Ready to go with game two. It's Madison going against Normal U High. Let's go back down to Peoria once again. Jim Blaney, Norm Van Leer. Gentlemen. Steve, thank you very much. Getting ready to go here in our second quarter final game. The winner of this game will play Spring Valley Hall tomorrow morning in the semifinals. Norm and I here courtside, and we are joined by the third member of our team now, our good friend Yvonne Simmons, who's standing by down the baseline. Yvonne. Hey, guys. Jim and Norm, both teams have, are up-tempo and have really commented on how other teams have held the ball in them. Madison is averaging 68 points a game. U-High comes in at 61, but there will be no stalling here. Both teams are playing to play up-tempo. Madison wants to run. U-High, they're going to run with the ball as well, although they're going to try and make Madison stay in the half-court game and run their offense. Back to you guys. And one thing about Madison, Norm, they're a single-A school that plays a double-A style. Most of the games they play during the course of the year are against double-A teams. As a matter of fact, they've only lost twice all year to teams that are single-A. Well, you know, sometimes it dictates uh, what you do by the competition you play. And uh, right now it's all about winning and, and advancing because sudden death basketball to me is the best in the world, be it high school, college, and uh, the pressures of what you have to do no matter who you play. You just have to dictate and run your own game, Jim, and, and maintain uh, uh, the lack of errors and, and pay attention to the coaching, the details, and what's got you here, and just deal with it. Usually in games like this, someone unknown steps up and helps out to help win ball games. So I think that'll be a key situation today. A lot of green in the crowd now as both teams, that's their primary color, will be back with the starting lineups right after this timeout. for the introduction of the starting lineups for today's quarterfinal game. Let's go to the PA announcer, Paul Herzog.
afternoon, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the city of Peoria, welcome to America's original March Madness. Today's quarterfinal game in Carver Arena, featuring the normal University High Pioneers with a record of 28 and 3, and the Madison Trojans, 25 and 6. Let's meet the rosters and the starting lineups for this game. For the visiting team on the scoreboard, the normal U High Pioneers. 6'1", junior, number 15, Lance McMillan. 6'1", junior, number 21, Andy Hinthorne. The 6'1", junior, number 23, John Charles. The 6'1", junior, number 25, Pete Martin. 6'7", senior, number 33, Kevin Jones. Six foot senior, number 41, Nick Anderson. 6'4", sophomore, 43, Joel Searby. 6'4", junior, number 45, Jason Holm. 6'3", junior, 51, David Arnold. And a 6'4", junior, number 53, Brian Williams. Now let's meet the roster, the non-starters for the Madison Trojans. A 6'1", sophomore, number 22, Stanley Jones. A 5'9", junior, number 40, Preston Brown. A 5'9", junior, number 20, Eric DeBow. A six-foot senior, number 21, Harry Thomas. A 5'6", senior, number 11, DeAndre Ware. A 6'2", senior, 34, Damon Sims. A 6'7", senior, number 35, Alvin Valentine. A 6'4", senior, number 15, Brandon McGirt. A 6'3", junior, number 41, Brandon Williams. And a 6'1", senior, number 25, Andrew Trice. And now let's meet the starting lineups. At a forward for Normal U High, a 6'3", junior, number 31, Neil Burskins. At a forward for Madison, the 6'3 and a half senior, number 53, Kevin Bradley. The other normal U High forward is 6'6 junior, number 35, Brandon Dirks. The other forward for the Trojans, a 5'10 senior, number 53, Jarend Howard. At center for U High is 6'7 sophomore, 55, Seth Hubbard. The Madison Center, 6'4", senior, 43, to Wansley Patton. At a guard for the Pioneers, a 6'1", senior, number 11, Jeremy Stanton. At a guard for Madison, the 6'0", junior, number 12, Maurice Baker. The other Pioneer guard, a 5'9", senior, number 13, Dan Bradley. The other guard for the Trojans, a 6'1", senior, 54, Clifford Burris. Assistant coaches for Normal U High are Selby Hubbard, Lester Hampton, Mark Edmondson, and Glenn Leary. Cal Hubbard is coaching his 20th year at Normal U High, his record this year, 28 and three. The assistant coaches for Madison. Coach Cal Marcus Hubbard Spragans, of University Canada. High. There's his starting lineup, and the answer is yes. Number 55, Seth Hubbard is indeed his son. And now let's check out the starting lineup presented to you by Country Companies for the Madison Trojans of Coach Al Collins. He has got one of the things, Norm, that coaches love. He's got a lot of big guys he can run in and out of the lineup, and he's got a great point guard, Maurice Baker, to get them the ball. No doubt about it. you got to have that point guard to run the show, especially when you get to this point of your season where it's sudden up basketball. I keep harping on that, but it's so important to youth and kids because every mistake is amplified, but yet and still you open the gates for that because they are so young. And this is what it's all about. This is maturing. This is growing up, and this is outstanding. This, this, this type of uh, basketball. The officials for our game today, William Rollman from Rockford and Jerry Whitney from Stillman Valley. They'll make the calls in the game today in two of the better Class A programs in Illinois basketball history. A lot of history between these two teams. Normal University High in the 1990s has been a frequent visitor to this state of the basketball tournament. Tradition is what it's all about. You hand it down to the next 
group of young men coming up. That's what it's all about. Jeremy Stanton at 6'1", Tawansley Patton at 6'7", go for the jump, and Sanders wins it. Very beautiful timing going up, getting that jump, and you see Madison starting out in a 2-1-2 two, two zone or 2-3 combination right now. Jeremy Stanton, number 11, at the ball at the top of the key. And a zone to start things out. Jump around the way by Hubbard, and that's good. He opens up the scoring. U High strikes first. And that's a good way to break a zone. You get it penetrating the middle like the spoke of a wheel. You get it in there, you turn, you make things happen. This time he hit the jumper. U High's doing the same thing. They're in the zone right now themselves. It would seem to be content in the early going, Norm, to have Madison try and shoot over the zone to see if they're hot. And then uh, if they're hot, then you drop in and play man to man. Opening jump shot by Maurice Baker goes down for Madison. We're tied at two, and here comes the full court press that you'll see from Madison High. And both teams hit their first shots in possession. No double dribble there. And the pressure worked at this point. Sanders commits the turnover. The ball will go back to Madison. Madison will press you and press you and press you. Now that is, if, if I'm not mistaken, was that uh, Stanton that? Uh, yes. Uh, he can't, uh, he's the one that can't afford turnovers. He's the, he's the leader of this team, and he can't uh, get out of the gates having turnovers. Burskins came away with the rebound. Now, there's something you're going to see in this game. Jeremy Stanton, it's up to him to decide whether or not to push it up the floor or not. And another turnover now in two consecutive trips by Stanton. Baker brings it the other way. Baker made one move too many. He's called for a traveling violation. The ball goes back over to U High. And normally, you, know, you open a game like this, a tough game, like I said, sudden death, you're going to have mistakes. And the team that settles down and kind of negate those mistakes are going to be the ones that's going to be the winner at the end. I'll tell you that. We got two turnovers in U High, and Madison has one already early in the part of this game. Burskins brings it up the floor, waits for Stanton to come free. In the corner for Dan Bradley. Had to go up high to get that one. Kept it from going out of bounds. You know, some people just has a pre have a presence. And this Stanton, you can see it already. Just even though he has two turnovers, his presence, the way he moves the ball, the arrogance in a positive way about him. That's no, just being confident. Norm, in a game like this where you get officials that normally don't work your area, how long does it take for the players to get used to the officials? Well, I tell you what, it's more the coaches getting his players ready for it because I think it's asking a lot to have kids try to get used to officials. They just have to play their game, and a coach has to maintain and dictate making, you know, being pretty cool out there. Hubbard, his second shot of the game. He's two for two. Yeah, you're going to leave him open uh, not too much longer because he's got the ball in that post area in the paint, turn around in a softball that he is and can both. Two-point lead for U High. Baker with the ball. He'll shoot it over Burskins. That wouldn't go. Dan Bradley, his coach said that he's the heart and soul of our team. You can see it there. A 5'9 senior in there with all the big guys pulling down the rebound. Burskins looked to pass before he had the handle. And it's another turnover on U High. That's about four of them, and you can't score when you throw the ball away. Now, two possessions they did not throw the ball away. You got it right into the post, and you got some scoring out of it. Jaron Howard with the ball for Madison. Got it back, free throw line, didn't pop the jumper, comes out to Baker, he'll take the shot, and that's good. Three-pointer for Maurice Baker. He's got five points in the game. That represents the entire total for Madison so far. And now Uhai doing a good job, quickly breaking the press. And Jeremy Stanton, what he saw is he saw Burskins breaking to the hole and then saw the defender from Madison come in, tried to pull it back, and he commits another turnover. Well, he's trying too hard right now. He's trying to make things happen. you got to let the flow come. Let it come to you. Don't make it uh, necessarily a thing you have to do when you get the ball down. But let it come to you. Take your time. Settle down. But he's a veteran. If you call veterans at this time in your life. But he's been around. Let's put it that way. Madison leads by one. U High looking for the lead. Brandon Dirks in the corner. Got rid of it. Uhai continues to swing it around. Bradley looking inside for Burskins. He's well covered. He was doubled up and then got away for a moment, but it was too late to get the pass in. After Dirks hit two in the middle of the post, they got him out of there because they're honoring that. Dirks didn't take the baseline jumper, fired into Burskins. He'll turn, fire, and hit. Beautiful patience that time by University High. They waited, and they have all their field goals have been from top of the key, a step or two inside the paint. And that's just patience, playing that zone, and waiting. Shot no good, rebound pulled down by Hubbard. You see it happening, you see the steal and a block, beautiful block. Shot on that after the steal. 
by Baker, but he had a shot block. Three-pointer on the way. That one won't go, and Taiwan's Lee Patton came down with the rebound, and as he came down with it, we get the foul committed. And that call early, I, I don't personally think that was a, a foul that I would like to see called because there wasn't any harm done. He got the rebound. It was just a little touch foul. Hubbard is guilty of the foul, so his dad will gather the guys together for a little chat. U High leads by one, 405 remaining in the first quarter. Country Companies Insurance, when it matters most, the country is behind you. Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. And by Ameritech, your link to better communication. The things that you hold close, we do too. Sharing your dreams and seeing you through. The bright tomorrows, human sorrow. When life doesn't go as planned, it's well worth having peace of mind that Keeper from the Country Companies brings. If your car is damaged and the cost of the repairs exceeds the cost of a new car, we'll replace it with a brand new one. Same make and model. JJ, Cassell, Gatling, Montrez, the Nets quartet of imports go up against Chicago's hometown heroes. Plus, live in the locker room afterwards, coverage begins... The purpose of the press is to create turnovers and easy scoring opportunities. And that's exactly what happened. Baker stole the ball, but I tell you what, Stanton came back with some good defense and blocked it himself. I tell you, whatever he dictates and whatever goes, this kid is the spiritual leader of this university high. Right now, he's got a couple turnovers, but they also have some patience and got some nice, decent shots within the paint in the top of the key there, and uh, they've canned all three from that position. New High has turned it over six times, yet they lead the game 6-5 as we cross the midway point of the first quarter. And Madison right now trying to get in a little bit of an offensive flow. Baker, three-pointer, that went off the front of the rim. Rebound pulled down by Howard. Now the baseline jumper on the way by Bradley, and for the first time in the game, we hear from Kevin Bradley. And I tell you what, you can't play a zone, give up a shot, and then turn around and, and let the opposition get another shot. That'll hurt you every time. There's no need to play in a zone. If you're going to allow that to happen, it's heads once. Let's see how they react to that. Jeremy Stanton looking in. Gives it across for Bradley. Hubbard didn't take the three in the corner. Stanton drives baseline, switched hands, and got two. And I tell you what, he's got some hops in his game. That was in. a burst, Norm. A burst, and he went up in the air, elevated, and got it right there with a left hand. An outstanding move right there. He's got some quickness. Got to get him involved in the offense as opposed to handling the ball all the time, too. Baseline jumper by Patton. That's good for two. Quite impressed with the outside shooting with Madison. They've surrounded the zone, and they've taken good shots. They haven't taken a poor shot yet. 9-8, Madison leads by one. Stanton fires into the corner. Dan Bradley looking inside. Burskins just can't get any position. Stanton knows his personnel in the court, too, because uh, he had his teammate open before shot Bradley. He didn't give it to him right away. See a block shot and a foul there, knowing that he was not an offensive-minded ball player, so he held up on that uh, last possession right there. Taiwan's Lee Patton gets called for the foul. That was a block. He got him on the wrist, on the arm, and that was a good call by the official, and he got two shots right here. Coming up. Shooting foul, Burskins will go to the line for a pair of free throws. 51% free throw shooting for Burskins on the season. You know, it reminds me of the University of High's outfits uh, with the black Converse sneakers. It remind me of the old Boston Celtics. Green uniforms, the black sneaks. I always thought it made your foot look bigger. I always do, too. I think they make you, I think they make you look slower, too. That's why I never liked them. Yeah. So I need to look as fast as I can. It's a good-looking shoe, though. I like to have that. Get to connect with the coach, did you? <laughs> Collins making a bunch of changes in his lineup. Which could be a key. It could be a key factor when you use personnel as often as you do and, and in and out, it can wear a team down. Neal rattled that one off the back of the rim. The rebound pulled down by Devon Sims. So Burskins goes 0 for 2 from the foul line, then a turnover on the other end. Uhai trailing by one. They have the ball. Nice catch by Stanton. Good job of getting it back down on the floor. Puts it out top of the key for Bradley. Now the jumper on the way. That one won't go. And the rebound was pulled down by Maurice Baker. He ran into one of his own teammates. And the ball rolls out of bounds. The coach can only look at it and say that's a good positive type of mistake. You're just being aggressive. You got the ball. You're ready to run it off one of your teammates' foot. But that's, that's all part of the game. U 
Rice still trailing by one. Madison's still in that zone. So it uh, got to rely on moving that ball, getting it to the key or outside shooting. And bringing that zone a long way out, too, North. Yeah, no doubt about it. A lot of pressure. They got a lot of pressure on whomever is handling the ball. That's the key to pressure. Get it into the middle and make things happen right there. Kevin Jones couldn't hit. Rebound pulled away by Alvin Valentine. Well, neither team has had what you would call a big lead in this game, but that would be for a big one there. And how about a rainbow three by Damon Sims? How about from Chicago? From wow. Madison? He shot that from, they wasn't even downtown. That was in another state. Four point lead for Madison, 12 8. Man, did he bomb that way out there. And didn't hesitate. And it was only a good shot because it went in. That was sweet. Yes, indeed. U High trailing by four. Do it with such ease, this team, Madison, shooting that outside shot. Just move it, confidence, and, and not just one or two guys. Everybody's just the green light to take it. U High has wanted to get something going on the inside, and just the zone defense of Madison so far has kept them from doing it. Stanton gives it over for Bradley. And they're pressuring everybody on the court but Bradley, who has to look for a shot just to keep him on. Stanton, nice dish in the baseline. Jumper, that wouldn't go. Rebound knocked back up on the backboard and finally pulled down by Kevin Bradley. Stanton, uh, uh, not a good foul. You're 45 feet away from the basket, and you're running back, reaching in. Don't show frustration. Now, here's where the coach has to step in and say, settle down. You are my spiritual leader. It's got to happen. That's what's so sweet about playing in these type of games, Jim. You just know, you know who's going to step up, who's going to do what. And some of your stars sometimes maybe just don't have it going on that day. Big Seth Hubbard back into the game for U High. Madison with the ball. They lead it by four. Coming up on the final minute of play here in the opening quarter. Nearly thrown away from Baker, but he got it back. DeAndre Ware. Gave it to Baker, three-pointer on the way. That one goes off the front of the rim. Battle for the rebound is knocked out. Ware dished it off beautifully on the baseline. And again, for the second time in this game, we see a player go and switch hands in the air. Damon Sims got two more. It's 14-8 Madison. And it's another one of those second shots from the zone defense is geared to just give you an outside shot and get the rebound and run from there. Stanton to the foul line, dumps it off in the baseline. Jones comes in, and he knocks down his first field goal of the game. You can't get any prettier basketball than that. That was beautiful. Stanton penetrating, kicking off. And I'm very much impressed of his ability to get in the air, to jump, to leap, the hops, as the kids call it. But that was a beautiful play right there. You would think Madison would have waited for the last shot. Instead, Baker fires one up. Seven seconds left. You high up the floor quickly. Jones, nice catch. Goes off glass, missed. But right there for the rebound is Jason Holm. Will they give him the bucket? No, they won't. Down on the floor. Down on the floor. But you're right. They get cost a foul, team foul. And it will give you a penalty or a shot at the basket. I think they're in a penalty. If not, but anyway, you get a team foul by not taking the shot or the smart shot, the last shot, that bad being Madison at this point. But uh, look, they got the green light. And obviously, what I'm seeing right now is you're open, you shoot. And it's not that it's uh, out, out of control. It's just a different type of basket. 1.2 left, three pointer on the way from Hubbard at the quarter buzzer, but it won't go. Madison, you high. It's 14-10 in favor of Madison at the end of one quarter of play. Hey, pick on someone your own size. Star Wars Trilogy is back on the big screen, and it's even better with a Pepsi. Great effects, man. Yeah. Friday night's IHSA Boys Class A basketball quarterfinal games will be shown locally on Sports Channel Plus. Here are the listings where you can find Sports Channel Plus on your local cable system. Please call your local cable company with any questions.
the second quarter, our second quarterfinal game. Madison leading Normal University High, 14-10. And University still in the zone. Both teams are playing the zone respectively, 1-2-2. Two, two. University is in right now. And outside shooting is the key right now as they turn it over, that being Madison. And that now is the sixth turnover on Madison, so both teams have turned it over six times during the course of the game. New High looking to get it down to a two-point game or maybe even make it a one-point game if they can. Hubbard, for a big guy, pretty good three-point shooter is a long way away from the basket, but called for a three-second violation in the lane, Jason Hom. You don't see that call that often. I don't care what level of ball you're playing in, but it's such a key turnover because it takes away an opportunity to shoot the basketball. And now Madison, an opportunity to build onto their lead. Pass was intended for DeAndre Ware. Instead, turning and firing was Alvin Valentine. He hits for his opening field goal of the game, and the Madison lead is back up to six. You think he knew he was going to shoot him when he got that ball? <laughs> Did he hesitate over? No doubt in his mind. Oh, nice shot. Turn around. He got up in the air. Nice in the paint point. New high again, looking for some points. Hubbard at the free throw line. Backs out, looking for a little help. Good pressure defense. It is a zone by Madison. Nick Anderson loads it up for a three. That won't go. Jones was there for the rebound. Hubbard was there as well. Three-pointer now on the way by Stanton. That's good. Get him on track offensively. He's had one nice drive. Now he's hit a three-pointer. Nice little push shot from the left side of the key. Cuts the lead in half to 16-13. Three-pointer on the way on the other end, and that's good. Make it a two. They rule his foot was on the line. Nonetheless, a nice shot, good ball movement, and this team does not hesitate to hit the open shot. And it's not out of control outside shooting. It's just good ball movement, and they're taking it with confidence. Clifford Burris made it a five-point game, nearly a steal by Maurice Baker, and instead... Officials timeout. Either contact or someone's poked in the eye. Jason Jason Hom is going to the bench for U High. Here's an attempt to steal a ball. I'll tell you what, Stan got away with a pulled off, push off there. But then, uh, good call. But anyway, it's, you got a... Where's that saline solution? Yeah. <laughs> Get it together. U High trailing by five. 618 remaining in the second quarter. They're honoring that postman now, and they put a little more pressure so that ball when it gets in the middle. So that's where a bulk of the points have come from University High. Jones will take it from three. That wouldn't go. Boy, we've seen a lot of three-pointers loaded up here in the early going. Now Madison, opportunity to push it up the floor. The U-High guys did a good job of getting back on the floor. Baker keeps working his way to the hole. Had it flat taken away by Bradley. Now Ware gave it up for Baker. He'll pull up, take the jumper. That wouldn't go. And the rebound was pulled down by Jones. You've seen a lot of three opportunities, Jim, because this zone has been playing. They're surrounding and firing like now. Stanton, Stanton didn't hit the three. Off underneath, here. we had all sorts of pushing and shoving going on. The ball will go back to Madison. Madison. The foul is going to be called on University High. Give the foul to number 41, Nick Anderson. Right. Hey, you see the replay right here. The ball's up. I thought it was ill by shot. A little too quick for my taste to get it up. You're moving and grooving. You got to break one thing. But the push off before the rebound, not bad play for Nick Anderson. A little small out there. You say, hey, you're not going to push me around. I think I'll push. Brandon Dirk started in the game. He's now back in the lineup. Madison trying to build on a five-point lead. Get Dirk in that post in that middle on that offensive end for University High because he's been pretty good from there. Jumper by Baker, three-pointer is good. Maurice Baker, his second three-pointer of the game. He's got eight in the contest. Madison has their biggest lead of the game at eight. I'm most impressed with the confidence level of uh, Madison taking the shot. That's what I'm impressed with. They are hitting it, but I'm really impressed with their confidence of just saying, hey, I'm open, I'm shooting. They're not wishing it in at all, are they? No, they are shooting like, I know I can make it, but you know what I like about it? The discipline to take their turn when it comes to them. They're not rushing to get it. Brandon Dirks to the baseline, put up the shot, he was fouled. Foul will go on Madison's number 54, that's Clifford Burris, that's his first personal foul. I tell you, if they maintain this type of pace of shooting the jump shot, Stan, uh, University High is going to have to come out of that zone. Steal on the inbounds pass. And now another opportunity for Madison to build in their lead. They can bump it up to double digits with a bucket here. Jumper from the corner. That one was a little short. It was short, but I was impressed with the ball movement because they worked to get the open shot. Stanton into the lane, hangs and drives and gets two. Oh, he's an athlete. I, I like this kid's game, Stan. And on the other end, Baker goes to the rack. Good call, and it was uh, not, not positioned, but boy, what a uh, 
good athletic move going to the hoop and didn't hesitate to go up. Baker's got some games and uh, hops himself. Dan Bradley's first personal foul. Here's the Stanton bucket. There you go. The little shake, bake, move to the side, a little lean, get in there, hang time. Could have been called for the foul against him, but he's in there. I can see now why he's averaging 16 points a game, and I can see why he's averaging just about seven rebounds a game. Neil Burskins comes back into the game for you high, and going to the bench will be Kevin Jones. Stanton looked like he'd be a nice wide receiver. Too. He made a great catch down here in the corner earlier, Norm. I can see he's, he's got an athletic ability in him. Now, here's what I like about Maurice Baker. Averaging 16 points a game, he averages six rebounds a game. He's 81% from the foul line, so when he gets there... He's got a complete game. I mean, it's just a complete game he's uh, playing here. Defense, he's quick, he moves. Both teams well-disciplined as far as I can see right now in their game. And just, just come out and they just play basketball. A seven-point lead for Madison right now. Uhai trying to cut into it. Dan Bradley looking for some room to operate. Instead goes to Stanton. Stanton, he'll take a three-pointer. That one just a little bit wide right, I guess you would say. And now Baker, a little bounce pass, got the ball back, and not only made the bucket, but didn't get the contact either. I tell you what, you're talking about basketball, you're talking about coaching, you're talking about execution. That was as good as you can find. And a turnover on Uhai. Baseline jumper wouldn't go. Hubbard had the rebound for a moment. Ball tipped out of bounds. It will go back to you high when we come back after this timeout. Madison has run out to a nine-point lead with 3.57 to go here in the second half. The answering machine in the garbage can and signed on with voicemail, and we've had it ever since. On voicemail, if your phone is busy, it picks up right away. Someone can leave a message then. So you're getting messages whether you're on the phone or not. Act fast to order Ameritech voicemail and get the third month free. Call 1-800-709-LINK and hurry. Time runs out March 16th. Voicemail is great. Ameritech, your link to better communication. Wendy's 99 cent crispy chicken nuggets are very hard to resist. Where are my nuggets? Oh, I, I think Dave took them. Where's my nugget? Dave. Wendy's crispy chicken nuggets, five juicy pieces of all white meat. Just one of the ten delicious choices on Wendy's 99 cent super value menu. Who ate my nuggets? Thanks, Thomas. Told ya. To gain respect in the NHL, you have to go up against the big boys in their own building. The Hawks face off with the division leaders looking to make some noise in the Lone Star State. Jim Blaney and Norm Van Leer in Peoria. This is the second quarterfinal game in the state Class A basketball tournament. Let's go over to Yvonne Simmons. Hey guys, you guys have had a lot to say about Maurice Baker, and I believe that Brad Lee from Carmi White County, the coach that they played against in the super sectional, would agree with you. He said that you need more than two days to prepare for Madison. The team just need two days to prepare and handle Baker. So he has a lot of props in, around with the coaches. He's getting a little rest right now. Al Collins pulling him out of the game, and oh, that was close to being picked off by Brandon McGirt. No doubt about it. It'd be interesting to see if University of Iowa will stay in that zone with the pace and the shooting out, outside. Beautiful pass oh, by Stanton. That was a great play by Stanton, Norm, because he drew the double team toward him, and then he found Hubbard underneath for two. Hubbard's got six in the game. Not only found him, he pinpointed that ball right there where he can uh, do something with it underneath. Dan Excellent. Bradley turning up the heat on defense, and McGirt couldn't hit that shot. Rebound pulled down by Brandon Dirks. You high down by seven. And they went out and pressured a little further out because the outside shooting starting to take effect. So you high went out against Madison, pressured a little bit. Seth Hubbard, big man shooting a three-pointer. That wouldn't go. Nice Great pass. rebound by Dirks. First get underneath, got two. And since that timeout, you've seen a different approach, a different type of energy level that is hitting University High. And they've moved the, the zone out a little further to go with that outside shooting that Madison's bringing to the table. Kevin Bradley put the shot up, received a beautiful bounce pass. It was fouled as he turned and fired with the shot. And that foul will go against Neil Burskins, his first. You see this outside shot, boom, up, pass to my teammate, up, hesitate, bop, could have been called for foul. Second effort, shots, so key to get him back into this ball game because they were about ready to lose it for a moment there. But uh, you can see, obviously, when Baker went out, the floor general, there was a little disturbance out there among the Madison team. 
Kevin Bradley on the foul line. His first attempt of the game went through the season as a 58% free throw shooter. Didn't seem like it there. He shot that with the confidence of an 80% shooter. 58% from the from the free throw line, 53% from the field. Oh, he's steady. <laughs> 6-19, Madison leads. And the press, a little token pressure. Not really, I'm going after the ball. So that's what Madison's applying right now. We'll see what happens now that Baker is back in the lineup. And they're still in the zone. 1-2-2, one, 1-3. Two, two, one, nice penetration. Burskin's turn. Hubbard got the ball, but as Hubbard made the catch, he was pushed from behind. The foul on Madison is going to go on number 53, Kevin Bradley. That's his first. And no doubt about it. And when you get the ball, and Burskin's, I think, turned around and beautifully. That, you can't, that's coaching right there. You get the ball in that post area where they've got three or four field goals, but you turn around immediately because you penetrated past the first wave of defenders, and you go underneath. That's what you have to do, and you've got to do it. And he did a good job there drawing the foul. Seven. They've been better at getting into their offense here in the second quarter. Turn around, that won't go. Tipped by Hubbard, rebound pulled down by Baker. Remember, Baker averages almost seven rebounds a game, and he's only six feet tall. Well, in this league, you got to remember one thing. You're aggressive, you know how to box out. 70% of rebounds in all the sports in basketball, I should say, are below the rim. It's not about jumping all the time. It's about position, blocking off. Stanton went to the baseline, hung in the air, couldn't get it to go off the glass. Baker pulls down another rebound. Two times in a row in the defensive glass. Baker got the rebound. Bounce pass to the baseline. Turn. Bradley was hammered as he went to the hole. He'll get another chance from the foul line. And kept his control because I thought at first he was a step that he didn't. He kept his feet on the ground. A good break by Baker starting this whole thing. Look at this good bounce pass. See, don't give me that lob stuff anymore. That's basketball right there. A bounce pass in there. You make things happen. Very well coached. And to me, that's basketball. I don't need to have that lob up and let's go for it, showtime, all that. This is pure, fundamental basketball. And that's why he's on the free throw line right now. Three in a row for Kevin Bradley, the 6'3 senior. And we see Kevin Jones check back into the game. And going out, well, Jeremy Stanton will stay in, and going to the bench will be Burskins. You know, I'm not so sure that. Uh, I wouldn't put Bradley at the point and let him handle it because he's not a threat at all out there to score and let him handle the ball a little bit. In some way, somehow, I get standing involved more in the floor of my game on the offensive end instead of handling the ball. That off, especially when we get over the half court. Because Bradley, they're not even honoring Bradley when it comes to. Oh, almost, nice pass. almost a great catch. It was a good pass. It was right there, but maybe a tad high. But the, the you know, you can see right here, it's a little high. Timing is a little off. You just lost it, but, but what a nice pass. The right idea. Just the execution wasn't complete, obviously. Madison leading 28-19. You high with the ball. Now that's what I put Bradley out there, basically, and try to pepper that ball around, get it in the post, and get Stanton some way to get involved in my offense. Stanton looked like he wanted to go one-on-one -on -one, instead gave it up. Now he gets it back. It's a lot easier to do it from the side as the top of the key when you're facing five people in front of you. And on the side where I can penetrate, move the ball, get him out of position, give him the opportunity to work in this gets two or three men, Jim. Brandon McGirt picks up his first personal foul. As you get a look at Cal Herbert. Took his team to the state title just two years ago. And U High has been a frequent visitor, as we've mentioned, to the final weekend in Class A basketball during the 1990s. Show some consistency, you know, know what the program's all about. Winning tradition. Nice pass to Bradley cutting to the basket. Instead, he was double teamed, had to get rid of it. And I'd like to have seen Stanton in that position once again. Stanton, oh, oh nice move. Well, you know what? He's done that so often today. What a great move. Going to the basket and switching hands and taking the ball away from the defenders. It ends up being a turnover on U High, but what a great move to the basket by Jeremy Stanton. The only way you can do that is when you got to have the hops. You got to be able to leap in the air to get that hang time to be able to control that. Here you see right now, there's good penetration. But like I said before, when you're going against five guys surrounding oh, him right there, man. it is very tough to do. I would like to see him on an angle position where you move the ball, get one or two guys out of position, let him operate against that type of stacked house because top of the key is tough, tough to get down there and do things, even though he can do it once in a while. Foul was committed by Brandon Dirks, a little over aggressive on the inbounds pass. Jaron Howard checks into the game. Demond Sims will go out for Madison. 
Maurice Baker will be at the line. He's one of two today from the foul stripe. And Madison just he's sending them in and out over and over. And I tell you what, during the course of this game, and even though they're young and running up and down, it does take its toll on the physical stress that's uh, played out there. And one thing, when you find a pressing team like Madison, one thing you find out very quickly is they've got a lot of people that run in and out. Because if you're going to play that aggressive style of defense full court, you have to run some people in because it's just difficult for five guys to play that for the entire game. And when you rely on one guy particularly to run your offense and then do all the scoring, the bulk of the scoring and the stand, it definitely takes its toll. The other people have to step in and step up and do the job. Baker missed the second free throw. Hubbard came away with the rebound. So Baker's gone two of four from the foul line in the game. 29-19, Madison leads it by 10. They're going to man-to-man. -man. Madison have now going to a man-to-man. -man. First time we've seen it this first half. And Jeremy Stanton says, I'll take that man-to-man -man and I'll take it right to the rack. And yeah, man-to-man, -man, I don't think anyone's going to be able to contain and watch him, but that was a heck of a move shot by the left hand. But you gave him an opportunity for penetration. Look at that ball movement. Baker, three, didn't get it. Nice rebound coming in from the backside by Nick Anderson. And it was a good shot, a good ball movement, and they don't uh, hesitate, Madison, at all to put it up. Three-pointer by Stanton, that's good, and just like that, it's a five-point game. Going in a man-to-man, and that's one thing that Stanton has opened his eyes for that. Jeremy Stanton, 12 here in the opening half. Baker got rid of it. And moving toward the baseline, trying to make his move was Howard, but that's going to be a blocking foul call on Seth Hubbard. An outstanding call. Person. And it was a good call. The officials doing an outstanding job in this game and keeping it right there. Stanton's on a roll right now. He's he loves this man to man, doesn't he? Oh, his eyes opened up right there. Yeah, now, now let me do it to work. I got one to operate against. Well, let's see what Al Collins has his team do on the next possession. Whether he leaves it on for the last 17 seconds of the quarter or as if he has his guys switch back to the zone. Well, scout report is he gives different looks just to see right. what's happening. He took a shot at that just before the half and it's kind of hurt a little bit because they've cut right into that lead University High has and uh, you do that. If you're going to experiment, you might as well have a lead to do it with. Jaron Howard on the foul line. 47% free throw shooter. He's a 90% free throw shooter. 31-24, and the full court press on right now for Madison. Stanton brings it in. Nine seconds remaining in the quarter. Long cross court pass, nearly picked off. Dan Bradley, a no look pass to Hubbard, and he puts it in. Beautiful play, and they got confidence and build up uh, what seemed to be out of it. And University High is like right back in this basketball game. The Stars came to play in the opening half of this one. Madison leads it by five, 31-26 at the half, but what great execution by U High on that final possession, and the no-look pass by Bradley down to Hubbard, he gets two, and it's a five-point margin. Let's go to Yvonne Simmons. Coach, your team had turnovers early, but they settled down, they went inside in the penetration of Stanton. We're not getting very good offensive movement. Uh, we're not attacking the basket offensively. And defensively, we're not doing a bad job, but I thought Madison did a good job of hitting their shots. So we're going to have to give them tougher looks on, uh, on defense when they're shooting the ball. And uh, offensively, we're going to have to move the basketball, uh, especially Jeremy. we got to get more movement out of Jeremy. Do you think you'll stay with the zone? Well, I don't think we match up real well, so uh, I don't know. We'll, we might change a little bit, but uh, right now we'll just wait and see what happens. Okay, thank you, Coach. Good luck second half. Jim, back to you. Well, right now, U High trailing by five at the half, but a little while ago they were down by ten. Coming up on the other side of the break, Steve Cashel of the Sports Channel Report. I'll be right back. Okay. Need two specials. All right, let's not take half of You become a sweet in my mouth. And I know you're gonna do it. Oh, yeah. I see. Got milk. Check, please. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Right now, get a new Chevy Lumina with low 4.8% APR financing. With dual airbags and automatic transmission, the Lumina still starts at a thousand less than four Taurus. And with 4.8% financing for up to 48 months, this could be the start of a wonderful relationship. She loves me.
Pick up the sports section of the Chicago Tribune. It's the in-your-face, no holes bar, take no prisoners, show no mercy, tell it like it is, on the glass edge of your seat. This could be wild, extreme, close up. Now I've seen everything. You ain't seen nothing yet. This you gotta see. You gotta be crazy. Why didn't I think of that? Heart stopping, gut wrenching. You want intense? I'll show you intense. It's back, back, way back. It's gone. Kind of sports section. Pick up the sports section of the Chicago Tribune. The IHSA March Madness Basketball Championships are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and Illinois, your local Chevrolet and Geo dealers, people you can trust when you're looking for a good car value. We're in game two of our great day of IHSA basketball here on Sports Channel. Steve Cashel back with you now. If all our games are exciting, as exciting as game one, we're in for quite a day. Let's check out the highlights from game one. Nashville taking on Spring Valley Hall. And Nashville led by five at the half, but in the third quarter, the Hornets hold on to the lead. Kelly Cruiser with a nice pass to Andy Gajewski. He scores the land. Nashville up three after three in the fourth. Hall goes on a 9-0 run. Nick Sterling scores down low. Red Devils will go up six. Then Sean Jepson, who had a great game, makes the nice move in the paint. Then hits a tough floater. He had 27 to lead Spring Valley Hall. But Nashville wouldn't quit. Cruiser bangs home the long three. Hornets get to within one. Then with 1.4 seconds left, Nashville down two. Zach Browiak goes for the win. But his shot barely draws iron. Spring Valley Hall holds on for the 57-55 victory. And they will meet the winner of game two, which is going on right now between Madison and Normal U High, being led by Madison right now, 31-26 at halftime. We're going to take a timeout, but we've got plenty more to come here on Sports Channel. Keep it right here. Tomorrow's human sorrows. It's nice to know when it matters most, the country's behind you. Life being what it is, ensure some peace of mind with safe and sound car insurance. It's affordable, it's for people just starting out on their own, and it's from the country companies. Pepsi Theft can happen anywhere, anytime. Fight back! Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen, <laughs> but it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. But today, thank you, Pepsi Club. Pepsi, Generation Next. Available in six-pack. Where is it? Is it under here? How did it get under here? Hello? Ameritech Auto Callback redials your last caller. Touch star 69. It's already on your line. You want my boys to come over? How soon? Now you could win a new Ford Explorer. Use star 69 during the Ameritech It's Automatic Sweepstakes, and you're automatically entered to win. Ameritech, your link to better communication. And now let's make that random call with today's $10,000 question. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? Mm -hmm. Hello, for $10,000. Oh, mm -hmm. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. Let me go for Oh, I'm sorry. Your time is up. Just can't get enough of this IHSA madness. Single A basketball action continues tomorrow right here on Sports Channel. It all begins at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning with the semifinals. The first game set for 11, second game set for 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, and it doesn't stop there. No way. Keep it here all day on Sports Channel because we get it going again at 6 p.m. We'll kick off the last dance with our IHSA boys Class A basketball special. I'll be your hosting a half-hour show. And 
and then it's the third place game at 6.30, followed by the main event, the Class A Boys Championship game. You won't want to miss tomorrow's Class A Hoops culmination only on Sports Channel, your headquarters for high school basketball. We've still got more to come on this IHSA special day. Don't touch that dial right now. Halftime of game number two, a quarterfinal where Madison leads Normal University 31-26. machine in the garbage can and signed on with voicemail and we've had it ever since. On voicemail, if your phone is busy, it picks up right away. Someone can leave a message then. So you're getting messages whether you're on the phone or not. Act fast to order Ameritech voicemail and get the third month free. Call 1-800-709-LINK and hurry. Time runs out March 16th. Voicemail is great. Ameritech, your link to better communication. My love must be a kind section of the Chicago Tribune. It's the in-your-face, no holes barred, take no prisoners, show no mercy, tell it like it is, on the glass edge of your seat. This could be wild, extreme, close-up. Now I've seen everything. You ain't seen nothing yet. This you gotta see. You gotta be crazy. Why didn't I think of that? Heart-stopping, gut-wrenching. You want intense? I'll show you intense. It's back, back, way back. It's gone! Kind of sport. We've got a five-point game going on right now. Ironically, it was also a five-point game in game number one. Let's send you back down to Peoria for the call. Once again, here's Jim Blaney, Storm and Norman, Van Leer. Guys? All right, Cash, thanks a lot. Let's take a look at the highlights from the opening half of play. And Norm, I mentioned it as we were going out to break. The big guys are playing big so far. Baker hit a couple of threes in the opening half. Uh, no doubt about it. The outside shot was there for Madison in the early part of this game. But Stanton picked up his game. You see penetration to the hoop. Nice left-handed lay up there, 12-8 at the time. Madison still in the lead, but boy, look at this. No hesitation. Boom! Nice little bomb there. The Sims just did not hesitate as we're in the second uh, quarter, 21-13 at that point in time. But then uh, Baker hits the second three of the game. Oh, and then, Baker's uh, on fire, man. I'm telling you. I like this one. Look at Baker. Bring it up the floor, give it up. Guess who gets the ball back? Baker, you give it. Be unselfish in a lot of ways, you get the ball back. And that's what it's all about. But this is a good team. Uh, Movement, but at the same time, toward the end of this first half, you saw Stanton just take over and get his team right back in this ball game as he penetrated, hit an open shot, and then came in with a left handed scoop doing his thing at this point 29 21 Madison. But here's this one the no look pass by Bradley in there. I tell you what, I'd rather have him out there and dealing with the penetration right there. Did you see the first half stats, Jim? Inside points for you high. They dominated Madison a bit in that category, but Madison leading on the scoreboard. Let's go over to Yvonne Simmons, who's standing by with Al Collins. Coach, you high really broke down the zone with the penetration in the first half. You went to a man. Is that something you're planning to do for the second half? Well, we might try a little man, but we try to make adjustment on our man and the zone. So what happened, we let them get too many easy passes inside, even on the zone. So we talked about picking up our man and covering on help side defense, stepping away from the man. We are too close to the man inside. We need to be at one step higher and cut out that passing lane. We plan to do that this half, and hopefully we can get that done because they have too many easy baskets underneath. The coach has given up the goods here on Madison. Jim, back to you. Thank you, Yvonne, and we'll be back with the second half of action after this timeout. Madison leading normal U High 31-26. The Wendy's High School Heisman. 
Since 1994, the Wendy's High School Heisman recognizes America's most outstanding and well-rounded high school senior men and women. After advancing through the state and regional competitions, the award winners will be honored in December at the Downtown Athletic Club in New York during Heisman Trophy Weekend. The Wendy's High School Heisman, combining the rich tradition of the Heisman Trophy with today's ideals of scholarship and community service. The coming of age of the adolescent grizzly bear. A strange rite of passage where they cry out for their most primal, urgent need. Heaven help us if they ever learn the Macarena. Pepsi, Generation Next. This week on Bull Sucks Underground. Some of the best games in the NBA season are played right here at a Bulls practice. Get an inside look when we go underground in the Birdo Center, the state-of-the-art facility that provides a fitting home for the world champs. Underground. underground, underground. Meet catcher Chad Kruder, a spring training diamond in the rough for the Sox. Plus, Tom Waddle brings you the latest news and much more. Bull Sox Underground, Sunday night at 7 on Sports Channel. Underground. underground. So the Hawks and the Wings in a big one tonight. Now let's send you back to the studios with Jim and Murray. Hey, it's Pat and Dale! Oh! Hey! hey! What's going on? I just want to say that you guys are just about the best announcers ever. Ever awesome! Aren't yeah. these the guys that got bounced out of Maple Leaf Gardens last night? Totally! We were... No, 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 I don't know oh. who you're talking about. No. I saw the guys with your shirts over your heads yelling you were a big Chief Blackhawk. No, that no. must have been somebody... I saw that guy! Yeah, we'll take care of him before oh. you. I'm sure you did. Security! Just about ready to go in quarterfinal number two, second half action. Madison leading Normal U High by five. Jeremy Stanton was outstanding in the closing moments of the opening half. U High outscored the Trojans 7 2 to end the half. Five of those points were by Stanton, the other two were by Seth Hubbard. And we should note that Dan Bradley had an assist on that bucket by Seth Hubbard. A very nice assist at that. A no look assist. And you start out uh, with the zone, that being Madison, the one, two, two. Basically a little combination. And Drew Hyde gets it on the baseline. Burskins got rid of it. And cutting across the lane was Hubbard. Beautiful pass on the baseline. Bradley was cut off. Unfortunately for Bradley, he's on a mismatch on almost anybody who guards him. But there he goes again, gets another assist. Seth Hubbard now has 10 points in the game. And that momentum that picked up in the last part of the second half, second quarter is right there. With University High, they start off in a good uh, positive note by getting a nice bucket down low. Hubbard, that's textbook denial of the basketball right there. Cut in the baseline, jump around the way, and that one goes in. To meet a tougher shot in basketball, you're talking about a little seven, six, eight footer, the tweener. And to put that in, I think that is a tough, tough shot. Clifford Burris hit it. And we're right back to where we were at the half. Five point margin for Madison. A little pressure out in front uh, against University and Madison playing. It's like a combination zone. And, you know, you just kind of go drift with the man you think is hot and you stay with him, but you're still zoning your area. Villanova is well known for that back in the days of Jack Kraft. Turn around Hubbard. That one's going to be a little short and kept his own rebound alive and got it back. He'll go up, couldn't hit the second one. Tried a third time and it's good. How about effort there? The official took a spill, but he rolled right up like he wasn't even missing a beat. No, he got up, but what effort to get that ball back up and get the two points. Hubbard has been outstanding here in the game, and Hubbard gets another rebound there. Of course, his dad likes him because he's his kid, but he likes him even better because he's only a sophomore. On the break, that one wouldn't go, and now a chance for Madison to run it the other way. Good opportunity for a run to get a break and get two points because they are definitely, oh, the momentum has definitely switched, and the aggressive play has been played by University High. And that, that change of the man-to-man -man from the zone sparked this team, and all of a sudden they're live, led by Stanton. 33-30, Madison leads. Hubbard denying the entry pass to Bradley. There's some uh, adjustments being made by the both squads as they go in halftime, and good coaches will do that and make a little adjustments. Baker, well, what a great play that was. Unfortunately, Patton couldn't hit the shot. Baker looked in, got his man to slide down to commit the front, had a guy open at the foul line, but Patton couldn't hit the shot. And I thought he got fouled on the play after the shot. He got hit in the body there, worrying about that, but no call. 
Jumper on the way by Burskins, and that one took a couple of rattles, wouldn't go. Tip try, that wouldn't fall, but Dirks got fouled as he took a second opportunity at it. He'll now go to the foul line and try and earn two. That's the first foul of the second half, and it goes on Kevin Bradley, his second. And here's what's happening with the Madison team. It's the fact that the University High is coming in, getting second, third, and fourth shots. And if that continues, I don't care how well you shoot outside. This is uh, going to take its toll. The Chicago Tribune is the official newspaper of the IHSA state championship, so pick up the Chicago Tribune for complete coverage of Illinois high school sports. Dirks hits the first free throw. Cal Hubbard looking up at the clock and seeing that there's 5.30 remaining here in the third quarter, and his team is down by two. Dirks, that one wouldn't go, and we get a lane violation called, so Dirks is going to get one more try at it. Well, these little small, subtle mistakes would add up if you're not careful, and uh, you already gave the momentum to University High at this particular time before the half ended, so you got to regroup, get yourself together. Two-point lead right now, and very dangerously uh, slipping away for Madison at this point. Let's see if Dirks takes advantage of the opportunity. He does. It is a one-point game. Madison leads. They have the ball. Here comes Baker. Pull-up jumper. That one wouldn't go. And it looked like Baker may have tipped it in. Well, I tell you what, he was right there, if nothing else. And that's what you have to do to come back, break that this momentum that University High has had right now. And that was a good play. And guess who spearheaded it? Baker. Bradley with the ball now for U High. Nice pass, jump around the way, that wouldn't go. Rebound pulled down and then set up the floor to Baker. That's going to be a foul on Brandon Dirks. He clearly, A, didn't get position, and then B, reached across the body of Baker to get to the ball. I think it would have been a little uh, wiser and, uh, to get back to the paint of the key and try to challenge him from there as far as the fast break was going right there. Maybe look for a charge or something like that, but nonetheless, you got a team foul. We'll see what happens from here. Madison leading by three. University's in his own. Baker quickly double team. Now Say you guys are just about the best announcers ever. Ever awesome. Aren't these yeah. the guys that got bounced out of Maple Leaf Gardens last night? Totally. We were so no, no, no. I don't know oh. who you're talking about. No. I saw you guys with your shirts over your heads yelling you were Big Chief Blackhawk. No, that no. must have been somebody. I saw that guy. Yeah, we'll take care of him. Oh, you. Yeah, sure you did. Security. Just about ready to go in quarterfinal number two, second half action. Madison leading Normal U High by five. Jeremy Stanton was outstanding in the closing moments of the opening half. U High outscored the Trojans 7 2 to end the half. Five of those points were by Stanton, the other two were by Seth Hubbard. And we should note that Dan Bradley had an assist on that bucket by Seth Hubbard. A very nice assist at that. A no look assist. And you start out uh, with the zone, that being Madison, the one, two, two. Basically a little combination. And U High gets it on the baseline. Burskins got rid of it. And cutting across the lane was Hubbard. Beautiful pass on the baseline. Bradley was cut off. Unfortunately for Bradley, he's on a mismatch on almost anybody who guards him. But there he goes again, gets another assist. Seth Hubbard now has 10 points in the game. And that momentum that picked up in the last part of the second half, second quarter, is right there with University High. They start off in a good, uh, positive note by getting a nice bucket down low. Hubbard, that's textbook denial of the basketball right there. Cut on the baseline, jump around the way, and that one goes in. To meet a tougher shot in basketball, you're talking about a little seven, six, eight footer, the tweener. And to put that in, I think that is a tough, tough shot. Clifford Burris hit it. And we're right back to where we were at the half. Five point margin for Madison. A little pressure out in front uh, against the University and Madison playing. It's like a combination zone. And, you know, you just kind of go drift with the man you think is hot and you stay with him, but you're still zoning your area. Villanova is well known for that back in the days of Jack Kraft. Turn around Hubbard. That one's going to be a little short and kept his own rebound alive and got it back. He'll go up, couldn't hit the second one. Tried a third time and it's good. How about effort there? The official took a spill, but he rolled right up like it wasn't even missing a beat. 
No, he got up, but what effort to get that ball back up and get the two points. Hubbard has been outstanding here in the game, and Hubbard gets another rebound there. Of course, his dad likes him because he's his kid, but he likes him even better because he's only a sophomore. On the break, that one wouldn't go, and now a chance for Madison to run it the other way. Good opportunity for a run to get a break and get two points because they are definitely, oh, the momentum has definitely switched, and the aggressive play has been played by University High. And that, that change of the man-to-man -man from the zone sparked this team, and all of a sudden they're live, led by Stanton. 33-30, Madison leads. Hubbard denying the entry pass to Bradley. There's some uh, adjustments being made by the both squads as they go in halftime, and good coaches will do that and make a little adjustments. Baker, well, what a great play that was. Unfortunately, Patton couldn't hit the shot. Baker looked in, got his man to slide down to commit the front, had a guy open at the foul line, but Patton couldn't hit the shot. And I thought he got fouled on the play after the shot got hit in the body there, worrying about that, but no call. Jumper on the way by Burskins, and that one took a couple of rattles, wouldn't go. Tip try, that wouldn't fall, but Dirks got fouled as he took a second opportunity at it. He'll now go to the foul line and try and earn two. That's the first foul of the second half, and it goes on Kevin Bradley, his second. And here's what's happening with the Madison team. It's the fact that the University High is coming in, getting second, third, and fourth shots. And if that continues, I don't care how well you shoot outside. This is uh, going to take its toll. The Chicago Tribune is the official newspaper of the IHSA State Championship, so pick up the Chicago Tribune for complete coverage of Illinois high school sports. Dirks hits the first free throw. Cal Hubbard looking up at the clock and seeing that there's 5.30 remaining here in the third quarter, and his team is down by two. Dirks, that one wouldn't go, and we get a lane violation called, so Dirks is going to get one more try at it. Now these little small, subtle mistakes would add up if you're not careful, and uh, you already gave the momentum to University High at this particular time before the half ended, so you gotta regroup, get yourself together. Two-point lead right now, and very dangerously uh, slipping away for Madison at this point. See if Dirks takes advantage of the opportunity. He does. It is a one-point game. Madison leads. They have the ball. Here comes Baker. Pull-up jumper. That one wouldn't go. And it looked like Baker may have tipped it in. Well, I tell you what, he was right there, if nothing else. And that's what you have to do to come back, break that this momentum that University High has had right now. And that was a good play. And guess who spearheaded it? Baker. Bradley with the ball now for U High. Nice pass. Jump around the way. That wouldn't go. Rebound pulled down and then sent up the floor to Baker. That's going to be a foul on Brandon Dirks. He clearly, A, didn't get position, and then B, reached across the body of Baker to get to the ball. I think it would have been a little uh, wiser and, uh, to get back to the paint of the key and try to challenge him from there as far as the fast break was going right there. Maybe look for a charge or something like that. But nonetheless, you got a team foul. We'll see what happens from here. Madison leading by three. University's in the zone. Baker quickly double team. Now Bradley, baseline jumper, that's good. They do not hesitate, that being Madison, when they have a shot opportunity to put the ball up. I think that's good because it's a positive mode that everyone's in. Stanton was left open for a three, and you simply can't do that. He's now got three three-pointers in the game, and you high now back to within two at 37-35. Stanton did, and good steal by Stanton right there. And now Stanton gets the ball back after the turnover, let Baker go by, couldn't get it to fall. Bradley touched it last, ball goes to Madison. Good call right there, but Stanton has basically taken over this game by his presence, handling the ball, defense, and everything else that's going along with it. One man has taken over. 4.24 remaining in the third quarter. Madison led by five at the half. Right now, they're leading by two. The country companies knows that starting a family is no small feat. So the least we could do is start giving you a break with mini rates on most minivans. Michael Jordan. I've made shots at the buzzer. I've been in championship games. But I've never had butterflies like this. Show me your horn. Turn These the people are all business. Okay. Good thing I had my Chevy Blazer along. 
sure came through in the clutch. D-O-F-T-P-Z-L-C-D-O. Okay, but seat over in the blue chairs and wait for them to call your name. I not only renewed my license. Smile, look at the camera. I renewed. As you see right here, score 37-35. But what watch this play. Stan has taken over defensively, Jim, and offensively. He just made part of this game. Got the steal, but blew the layup basically on a, a move just hanging in there. And this guy just his presence on the court. It's such a positive mode for this team, University. Uh, Pretty darn even, Norm. You know, no <laughs> doubt about it. They're going at it. And Two fine, fine ball players. And they've played well in a very big game. The winner gets Spring Valley Hall in the semifinals tomorrow morning. The move to the hoop, and we're going to get a foul called. Hubbard was in the area. Let's see if indeed the call is on him. It's a block it's call, but I don't know about that. Now, maybe he's too far in the bucket, Jim, but here's the replay. gets it, Norm. That's his third. I tell you what, maybe, you know, only reason he didn't get the call too far underneath the bucket, I, I would feel. Burskins uh, got the block. Who's also been pretty good in that uh, offensive scheme of things in the middle of that offense in that zone against Madison. Alvin Valentine puts in his first free throw. Missed most of the last two seasons because of academic trouble, but hit the books, got himself eligible again, and having a fine season. And, you know, it's it's one thing to end up academically ineligible, and then from there you have to decide, well, am I just going to sit here and stay that way, or am I going to work my way back onto the team? And Valentine has worked his way back onto the team. And that's a good part of it. A lot of times, maybe it's not the books in the sense of uh, learning that area, but if you're a good person, good kid, we can always change and get into some good habits of study. As long as you're good uh, as far as the community, being a good person, you can always work on the books. One point lead for Madison, baseline jumper. That one rattled out, and then Bradley had it blocked from behind, and that's going to be number three on Brandon Dirks. That's a big call right there, a tough call, because I thought it was a good block. You can see the replay right here. Once again, a second shot effort, though. If you get the first one, then you don't have to worry about the foul. And he's up, and I don't know. I kind of like the block myself. Maybe he got him with the body, but could be a big uh, factor here with 341 left in the third quarter. Right, because Cal Hubbard hadn't gotten Dirks out of the game yet, and he's got three personal fouls, and prior to that, Burskins was still in there as well. So Nick Anderson comes into the game, as does Kevin Jones. Now, it's up to two ways you look at this. It's up to the substitutions to come in and maintain and keep it going, or here's where Madison can take advantage of having one of your first unit guys out of the lineup with personal foul problems and uh, go from there. But first of all, you got to hit free throws. That doesn't help you. Still a one-point game. That is the first free throw that Bradley has missed in this game. Al Collins looking on, seeing his team leading by one at the moment, and now by two. 39-37, U-High can tie it with a two. They can take the lead with a three. A little token pressure, not really to go after the ball. Here comes Jeremy Stanton. Stanton spins, got away, three-pointer on the way, and that would have been for the lead. Bradley got the rebound, but Bradley used his body a little bit too effectively to spring things open for himself. Gets called for the foul. Yeah, a little push off underneath there, and uh, tell you what, Stan, that's three on Bradley. So fouls are starting to mount up on the front runner people here. And it's time to make adjustments. But I tell you what, Madison, they use a lot of bodies anyway. I mean, that's just uh, the norm for them. So people are coming in and out, in and out. Dan Bradley puts it in the corner. Stanton gives back to Bradley. 3.14 remaining in the third quarter. And what's take, been taken away that we neglected to, to talk about? We are tied at 39. Is the outside shot that Madison was hitting so well first part of this game. It has now been erased, and everything's been penetration or from the free throw line from this point. Jumper, Baker, that one was long. Rebound was pulled down by Valentine. He turned and fired and was fouled. And for the first time in, in this game, and we're 2.54 into the second or third quarter, the uh, Baker, to me, took a ill advised shot. Seth Hubbard, who's the leading scorer in the game with 14. You see the penetration here, Stan? Get his teammates right there. Everything based on what he does with the balls we said earlier in the show. Penetration, getting his team involved, scoring points himself, playing defense. Rebound, getting the break. It's all on his shoulders, basically, of getting everyone else jump started. Seth Hubbard has to come out of the game. That was his third personal foul. 
And I don't know if it's just the frustration of not being able to get an outside shot going, Jim, since the, I'd say about uh, two minutes left in the second uh, quarter, but uh, Madison has not uh, hit outside shot on a consistent basis like the first part of this game. Madison leads by a pair. Yvonne, what do you have for us? A stat that might make a difference, you guys, is rebounding. University High averages 30 rebounds a game, and for Madison, it's 43, with four players averaging five-plus rebounds a game. Yeah, that's a great point, because you look up and down this Madison roster, the rebounding is incredible. That one wouldn't go, and the rebound pulled away by Brandon McGurk. Just doing it by committee. And Madison now looking to hammer it inside. Jumper from the corner of the lane by Valentine is good. Now, all of a sudden, Alvin Valentine has started to warm up. He's got seven points in the game. And that was good ball movement right there. They had the patience on that, and they needed that shot, I think, for the confidence level because uh, this University High team had played some D, come out, put some nice plays, and dictated what was going on in a good five, six minutes of this game. I want to point out that Dan Bradley made a great play right there. Normally a player gets the ball, they take a couple dribble, dribbles. That would have put him into the front court and Baker would have had him dead. But Bradley stood his ground, waited for a man to come free and then got rid of it. And Madison's in the man to man, which I thought got him in trouble first half of the game. And Stanton tried to make the one more pass down on the baseline to Jason Hom and he gets a break because the ball goes out of bounds off of a Madison player. But I tell you what, he penetrated and made things happen even though he's doing that against his own also. But it might be a little dangerous to play this team man to man. Nick Anderson knocks down a three pointer. It's back to a one point game. 43 42. Madison has the lead. Minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Good tough shot from the corner. Long jumper on the way. That one rattles in and out of the rebound. Pulled down by Kevin Jones. And he had the look. I mean, it's no different than any other shot they've taken, but he'd be happy to miss this one. He's in and out of there. But that's their look, and that's one of the second, uh, maybe second time this half that they had a good look at a jump shot. U High looking for the lead on the baseline. Bradley won't take the shot. Instead, we'll give it out for Jones. He was open for a three. Too far out, and that was wide. You got a lot of patience and time, and this is even better shot right here. U High has the lead. And it was a better shot, so his wise decision ended up getting him a couple points anyway. And the fans who have made the trip from normal on their feet as they see their team take the lead. And then Jeremy Stanton gets called for a foul. He made that play once earlier, waited for the man to go by, popped the ball out. That time he committed the foul. See this last basket uh, passed inside and uh, the patience that was displayed. Well, it was a Kevin Jones. I'll tell you what, he just laid back and just waited because he did take the shot before, but he got the shot eventually. Now Madison trying to answer. And I'll tell you what, we didn't elaborate on the fact that I thought it was a bad call against Stanton. I didn't see him foul. He reached around, but high school level, they like to call that reaching in. I thought it was a good steal. Boy, he was on his way. I don't know if it was any different from the one he got before when he missed the layup. 49 seconds remaining in the quarter. Baker, ball fake. He'll take the shot. That one goes for a three-pointer. Big shot. Big shot for this time of the quarter to go down and get the lead back for Madison because that more aggressive team and that, that's just by slight is the uh, University of High. They've just come right back led by Stanton getting this team right in the ball game again. Third three pointer in the game for Baker. Madison leads by a pair. 32 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. That one was knocked away and then picked up by Stanton. Oh he's quick. Boy he really gets by people that first set. That was travel. Yeah, it was tripped a little bit but he traveled and then with 23.6 seconds left big turnover I with Kind of hesitate and wait for a one shot on this play here. But here, he's going to the hoop. We call that the NBA yeah, travel thing. That wasn't a travel in the NBA, though. No, see, in the NBA, you get away with that. In the NBA, take four or five steps and then make your, make your move to the hole. Boy, that defense stand is all over the court. All over the court. Jumper won't go. Rebound pulled down by Jones. He's double teamed, trying to get out of trouble. Had to handle the ball maybe a little more than he would have liked. And time will run out before Nick Anderson can fire up a desperation three. Madison led by five at the half. U High has knocked it down to a two-point game. We have one more quarter to go in this second quarterfinal game. The winner of this game meets Spring Valley Hall in the semifinals.
This week on Bull Sucks Underground. Some of the best games in the NBA season are played right here at a Bulls practice. Get an inside look when we go underground in the Birdo Center, the state-of-the-art facility that provides a fitting home for the world champs. Underground. underground, underground. Meet catcher Chad Kruder, a spring training diamond in the rough for the Sox. Plus, Tom Waddle brings you the latest news and much more. Bull Sox Underground, Sunday night at 7 on Sports Channel. Forget after tonight's game, we'll have our British Airways Michael Jordan insight. Hello. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Turning over a number of turnovers in the 32 points. Hey, Jordan is inside. He got some treatment from trainer Chip Schaefer. <laughs> and uh, who was that? that, that, that Tom it was Scotty. Schaefer. It was Scotty. minute of the second quarter and then the entire third quarter U High has really been tearing it up as of late they were down by 10 at one point they've now got it down to a two-point game they did take the lead briefly in the third quarter now they have a chance to tie possibly take the lead if that three goes and it does Nick Anderson his second three-pointer of the game it's living up to that name Nick Anderson he firing way out there and I'll tell you what that's two in a row for him and Giving this lift to an air outside shooting because they didn't have it first at University High. Baker let a man go by and he hit the deck as he shot, but the foul is going to be called underneath the basket. Madison will retain possession. And I tell you what, there's been a few calls uh, down the stretch run here the last couple of minutes in the inside of the, the, the four fouls now on Seth uh, Hubbard. And that's. Uh, that's a tough one. And remember, he's the leading scorer in the game so far with 14 points for University High. Brandon Dirks comes back in. Hubbard is going to go to the bench. Well, they've used him well. They get, most of that was around the paint, around that zone. They put it in there, and he's got it. He's in foul trouble right here. Birkins three, Dirks three, up, Hubbard up. four, which just left the game. And the foul this time is going to be called on Jones. He was over the back of Allen Valentine. For Jones, that's number one. I think they get in and hitting the board, just taking his toll and trying to keep up with the ability of Madison to get in there and be very aggressive on the board. So the fouls are going to be a key, big, major key factor going down the stretch run here, where University High doesn't substitute that often to begin with, let alone getting to the foul trouble. Got to look at Clifford Burris, who is back into the game. And now the question becomes, with the big guys getting in foul trouble for U High, is Kevin Bradley going to be able to assert himself a little more? I'm not saying he's not having a good game. It's just that he just hasn't been able to get the basketball inside. Neil Burskins comes back in. He has six points in the game. Well, the bottom line, Jim, and you mentioned those type, type of things, you're going to have to exert yourself. You're going to have to make it happen. Or you go to plan B, whatever that may be, to get the job done. Because this is sudden death basketball. You lose here, you watch the rest of the year. Alvin Valentine misses the second free throw. Jones came away with the rebound. We're tied at 47. Seven minutes remaining. Great basketball game. Well coached, both teams playing good, adjusting, doing things that they have to do. Dangerous pass, but nonetheless it was received by University High. Stanton going one on one, and there's going to be a block call on Clifford Burris. That's his second. The Madison bench reacting to the fact that uh, the elbow came up a little bit well, by Stanton. No right hand here. check, you can't do that. And a uh, little, little touchy, a little touchy, but nonetheless a foul. 47-47, seven minutes to go. Three-pointer on the way, that wouldn't go. Rebound in traffic. Valentine had it for a moment. Brandon McGirt had it for a second. It was knocked away with that many bodies in the area. Foul is called on Kevin Jones. That's his second personal foul. It seems no matter what, it's just the fouls are stacking up, and here's where the game is going to be won or lost. Free throw line. You got these guys in the penalty. And now, at this point in the game, with just 6.54, I say just, and then you protect the whole quarter, and Madison's in the bonus already. Well, these games are tough on these coaches, aren't they? Oh, no doubt about it, buddy. <laughs> it's, it's a tough thing to, to handle here. 
Alvin Valentine, who's been very efficient on the foul line so far. That was his seventh free throw attempt and the fifth one in which he has been successful. And you got to get in your mindset that you know every time there's a foul call, you're going to the free throw line. That's Madison's case, and you got to can these because that can be the difference in winning this basketball game right now. Valentine missed the second free throw. Pressure on by Madison. They're making it work. They're going after the ball now. They're not just the token. They're pressing to be. And you notice how they double teamed as soon as Stanton came across the timeline. That's wise. That's very wise. I wouldn't leave him for a minute. Jones, nice catch inside. Hung, couldn't get the bucket, but he was fouled as he turned to go to the hoop. And both Madison players saying, yeah, it was me. It was me. But indeed, the call goes on Brandon McGirt. That's his second. Oh, Madison has fouls to spare. And at the same time, they substitute so often that uh, you don't usually get people in foul trouble as quickly as you would if you didn't substitute. This first free throw by Jones will be for a 48-48 tie. Kevin Jones is quite a hero at University High. As a sophomore, he scored the game-winning bucket in the championship game against Aurora Christian two years ago. And then didn't play basketball at all last year. Came back out for the team, and he's here and trying to help U High win another state title. 48-47, Madison leads by one, they have the ball. Turn around in the lane by Bradley. That wouldn't go. And then he just flat took the ball away by Nick Anderson. And they call it jump ball. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Bradley had a man open early on the jump shot. As he turned around right here, should have hit down his teammate. Because he was wide, That's wide open on the burst was wide open anyway. That's a dead-on call by the officials. Nearly a steal on the inbounds pass. It's going to end up being a foul call Nick on Nick Anderson. Cal Hubbard's team trailing by one. And you go to the free throw line here in the bonus. I mean, this is so crucial. Every foul, now you're there. Madison with three free throw shooters better than 70%. Baker at 81, Valentine at 73, and Ware at over 70. But in this game, Valentine has been the busiest of the free throw shooters. Well, he's most active underneath the bucket, especially when he gets to basketball. He's been hammered. Al Collins looking calm for the moment. Outside. Yeah, not inside. Tip wouldn't go. So Valentine now has turned into a 50-50 proposition at the free throw line. 6-16 remaining in the fourth. Madison leads by a pair. Not for long if that would have gone, but that foul is going to get called on Clifford Burris, and that will be his third personal. Second shot to opportunity once again. You get the penetration by Nick Anderson. Almost a miracle shot you see right here. Go ahead, Nick. Let me a little pop up, ring around, boom up. Second shots and hammered. And now you're on the line. Now the free throw shooting for U High not nearly as good as that of Madison's. Their top three free throw shooters Stanton at 75, Bradley at 69, Dirks at 66. Dirks knocks down that one. Wasn't comfortable, at least from my mind, of watching him shoot that. He kind of threw it up there and leaned forward. And a lot more smooth, smoother at these, both these teams at the free throw line early in the game. But you know, the pressure's mounting. Burris comes out with three fouls. You saw Taiwansley Patton go back in the game. That had a little more of a, all right, I know what I'm doing attitude as he shot that. Yeah, usually if you're wishing on the first one and it goes in, the second one's a lot bigger. Oh, yeah, confidence built, you know. Baker. Wild shot didn't go. U High comes away with the rebound. It's tied at 49. Stanton brings it up the floor looking for the lead. He'll go in, got the bucket counted. He'll go to the line for a three point play. That was outstanding. He just drove the length of the court. Hang time. Get out there. of my way. Yeah, and just hung up there and got it. And it all stemmed from the bad shot I thought that Baker took. Unwise shot. But look at this. Hang time. This is where he's tough. Hanging, getting in there. Importantly, that's the fourth personal foul on Kevin Bradley. Look at this move. That's outstanding. I tell you what, where is he going to school? Got to find that out. Because he is, he's got a game for you. I like it. And at the same time, though, this was all dictated by the fact that Baker came down and took a, just a wild type of shot. And right now, you had to maintain your cool, especially Baker, because he is their leader out there. Demond Sims comes into the game. And that's one of the keys of if indeed University High takes and wins this game, Jim. I'm going to mark down the fact that 
just before the half, and it, they negated and took away all the outside shooting. Patton offense. was left all alone, but he had his sights on two, and that allowed Uhai to catch up. Patton goes in anyway and gets it. A defensive mistake by Uhai leads to an easy basket. And a wise uh, choice by Madison, being alert to take advantage of. Uhai leading by one, 5.43 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Madison's in his own, and you better go find Stanton because he was all alone out there. Stanton gets it, look to Bradley in the corner. Stanton drives, got around his man, couldn't get the bucket, but it is indeed going to be a foul. Alvin Valentine picks up his first personal. Now, Norm, what we're seeing here, too, is with Dan Bradley, and we'll get to that in a second after we look at the replay. Look at this move right here. A little fall, a little fade away. Good call by the officials, can't argue that one. And I, like I said, you got Stanton now taking over, making things happen, and I would have to honor wherever he is on that court, along with Nick Anderson, who has had the hot hand at this time. Stanton misses the free throw. Dan Bradley has not been an offensive threat at all in this game, and he's more of a distributor and control guy. If you're playing defense on you high, can you give Bradley a little extra space and try and help out on Stanton? I would do that until he proved that he can uh, make me wrong on that decision. I have to understand right now. I have to just give him that gauge. I said that before. I would rather see Stanton over on the side where he can get the ball and let Bradley at top of the key to handle it. Collins wants a timeout. He's seen his team fall behind by a pair. 524 remaining in the fourth quarter. We do too. Sharing your dreams and seeing you through the bright tomorrow's human sorrow. Life doesn't go as planned. It's well worth having peace of mind the keeper from the country companies brings. If your car is damaged and the cost of the repairs exceeds the cost of a new car, we'll replace it with a brand new one. Same make and model. game down by 10 right now they're up by two 53 51 over Madison 524 remaining in the fourth quarter and we've got some big people in foul trouble Seth Hubbard with 14 points he's on the bench right now Kevin Bradley who has nine points in the game he is also on the bench at the present time no now Bradley has checked back into the game so Bradley playing with four fouls number 53 for Madison High and he's going to be locked up in the post. He'll probably be battling Kevin Jones, so keep an eye on that. Well, it's a wrist uh, move right here to see what he can do. And right away, it's a turnover. Right, they, tried, they tried to get the ball to Bradley. Jones took it away. Stanton gave it out to Bradley. Let's we'll see if Bradley gets a little extra room, too. Brandon Dirks, baseline. He was quickly picked up on the double team. No, the defense is there. They're playing, but you better honor Fine Stanton. And Stanton got free for a second, but not enough to get a shot. Goes to the baseline. You know what? He gets one-on-one. -on -one. He's dangerous. He missed the shot there, but once he got one-on-one, -on -one, he went to the hoop. He came back after missing the shot and caused the turnover. That's the third time against Baker that that's, that's, that's happened with that ball. you got to be a little more careful with that basketball bringing it up. Hubbard made his move to the bucket, got his man in the air, and picking up the foul is Alvin Valentine. He's got two. What's up? This is the third son for Coach Hubbard that has played on his team. Neil was on that 92 team that plays second. Nathan was on the 95 team that won the title. And then Seth right now is the 97 team, and they're in the Elite Eight. Keep it all in the family, right? Definitely. It's a family affair. The coach's son, you know, those, those are the best players. And daughters, too, we can't forget. <laughs> that could be good. It could be dangerous. You never know. And I'm speaking of just sons or daughter playing for your coach, so... It's got to be a certain type of chemistry uh, brought about with that situation. It's a very difficult situation. Very difficult. I'll tell you what, the, the coaches and the sons who can handle it, you usually see them excel as Seth Hubbard is in this game and is at U-High overall. 
What a game he's having. He's on his way to a double double if he can get a couple of boards. Missed the second free throw. Alvin Valentine came away with the rebound. U High leads by three. Four and a half minutes remaining. There's two things. Madison Jr. You have to hit outside shots. And on the other end of this, when they do get fouled, they got to hit the free throws because they, they've just been shut down. If, if, you, if University High wins this game, look back to the point when they've shut down the outside shooting of Madison because it's not that Madison's not making shots, Jim. It's just that they've taken that shot away from them. Valentine to inbound. Baker has been very, very quiet here in the second half. He's only got five points here in the second half. And they're in the zone. In the zones, you can find outside shooting. Valentine with a smooth foul line jumper. Made it look very easy, and you're going to need that if they're going to pull this out. Madison, they have to rely on that. Move the ball, have a little patience, get good, sound shots. It's a one-point lead. A little hot to handle, but Hubbard found the ears on it. Now a pop the jumper. That wouldn't go. Rebound battered around, and it's pulled down by Taiwan's Lee Patton. I thought that was too quick of a shot to have taken that time. Could have got a better shot. Madison looking for the lead. They trail by one. And if they have patience, like they had early part of this game, and not throw it away, it'll be all right. But as soon as I said that, Stanton goes to the bucket. And let me tell you something. He was absolutely hammered by Devon Sims, yet Stanton kept his poise, got the bucket. He'll go to the line for a three-point play. And I tell you right now, you see the replay on this. And I'm going to tell you what this is about right here. This is about strength. Even though you don't see the bulk, it's about strength. And a lot of thin guys have that type of uh, look. Look at this. Another look at this. He went up. He got hacked right here. But it's also about strength, concentration, or getting it done. And don't let the look fool you. This young man has a little got some strength under those thin arms. I'll tell you that. And he knew it was coming. No, oh, no doubt about it. But see, he's one of those kind of people. You can't coach heart. You can't coach the fact that you're tough. You got to have that. And he has that. I can tell you, boy. I tell you what. He can be a great wide receiver. I can see that. You know, we've seen him make a couple of good catches in this game. Stanton knocks down the free throw. Three-point play for UI. They lead it by four. 340 remaining in the fourth quarter. See, there's the mistake. Bring it over the timeline, and then you get double teamed in the corner. And you get the opportunity of the defense to get back on D. Baker lost everybody, including me, but he couldn't finish the shot. He lost everybody because he carried the ball and got away with it. That's what the <laughs> was. But he's hustling, and he's fouled uh, right there, which is a good call. And I tell you what, there's a tad of Madison losing a little poise right now, Jim. See, and that's what I'd say about that sudden death basketball, the pressure when you get down to crunch time and doing things. It's just what makes this game great. The high school playoffs, along with the collegiate playoffs, sudden death, you can't beat it for the excitement. Two shot foul opportunity for Stanton. Hits the first free throw. Yvonne? As you've seen Stan's speed display this entire game, you can attribute that speed and footwork to the fact that he is first team all state in soccer. He's been in games where he's, there's been a box and one on him. There's been in games where there's no help defense and he's had to control everything, making a living on the foul line against Fairbury Prairie, Prairie Central. 31.17 of those came from the foul line. Yeah, he's personally taken over this game, I can tell you that. Four free throws in a row for Stanton in the game. It's now up to a six-point lead for U High. And Cal Hubbard says we're here because Jeremy Stanton has carried us. No doubt about it. And it's obvious from what's going on. We said pregame show. He is the catalyst. He's the man. He's averaging 16 points a game, nearly seven rebounds a game. And that can go with a lot of other people. But when you're the leader on your team and the only one doing that, everything hinges on what you do. But I tell you what, you've had some people come in and hit some key shots in certain situations. One coming to mind, Nick Anderson. He hit two bombs in that corner. But I think the turning point in this game is just before the half ended. Madison went into a man-to-man -to, -man to spark Stanton to get him going. Don't forget that coming up tonight on Sports Channel Plus, we have the other half of the quarterfinals starting at 6.30. Remember, that's on Sports Channel Plus. Contact your programming provider to find out about the availability of Sports Channel Plus in your area. You know, last year we used to fight over that spot, the plus, between you. That's right. And our old Billy Gardner was there. Steve and I, we even had battles on the hockey and the basketball court over there. I can remember you raining three-pointers over my head like it was yesterday. I remember Billy skating by me as if I was just nothing. See, I'm going to have Yvonne shoot my three-pointers for me this year. Well, she can shoot. She'll get you the, got that. First of all, she'll get you the first couple of times because you don't, you don't pick up. She's a left-handed shot right away. Yeah. 
My Baker, scout report is I'm ready at all times, <laughs> no matter if I'm playing my mother. You're Baker ready. has really been quiet here in the second half. No doubt the adjustments were made in the outside shot that was uh, there by way of moving the ball, having patience, was knocked down. It's not that he's shooting that poorly as much as it is you've taken away the shot. Because most of those shots there went from the outside. That was a penetration throwing the ball up. Now, so that's, that's a little different. Jumper by Valentine. Second time in a row. He's taken that little smooth jumper and the foul line. This team, Madison, had the patience to get that shot for this young man. That's what they have to do. Don't panic. Be cool about it. And get the shot. And it'll all come to you. Even the outside shot for, for Baker. You high. Leading by four into the corner to Jones. They want to make sure they get a high percentage shot. Hubbard has it. He was double teamed. Got rid of it. Moving into the lane was Dirks. Couldn't hit the shot. And then as he tried to get the rebound, he commits the personal foul. That is now number four on Dirks. So two players in the game right now for you high. Dirks and Hubbard playing with four fouls. And it takes away the aggressive approach uh, when you have fouls like that. And especially when you don't go to the bench as often as a Madison team will go to their bench. So. Well, check that. They give the they signal the foul on Kevin Jones. That's his third. Baker will get an opportunity from the foul line. You see number 15, Brandon McGirt, coming into the game. And Clifford Burris will check in as well. well I can tell you from this point on out, no doubt about it, it's crunch time. Free throws, every turnover, everything's amplified at this point in time because the game is winding down to. It's over if you lose. Baker 81% in the season, but is only two of four in the game. Make it now two of five. So it's a big free throw. You got to make these down the stretch run. And the beauty of uh, the game is the kids playing and the pressures and who grows up with pressure. I think that's just the, the whole art of growing up. And yeah. they don't give it oh. to him, Norm. Norm, go into your go into about this would you please I can't stand the play I mean it's good hustle and everything else but to be able to call time out and falling out of bounds to me I just is not part of the game you got to have full possession and I think you take away especially on the defensive end the offensive end when people do that it just takes away from the defense. if someone's hurt they need to call time out and it, Baker's on the other end of the floor so that being number 15 Brandon McGirt and he's clutching his ankle high up on his ankle yeah, he just got in the game, if I'm not mistaken, and turned around. And yes, he did. 2.35 remaining in the game as they yeah. attend to McGirt. We're going to take another look at it and yeah. see exactly what happened to McGirt. Yeah, that's wise. You call your team over. Get away from the player that's hurt. Let the trainer and everyone else look at that. Get over and get some instruction. Here you see it turn his ankle right. Ow. Oh, yes, that hurt me over here. Oof. Mercy. The only difference is. It'll take me months to respond and get back to shape. He'll be ready in two minutes. Mark my word. He's having a little trouble getting off. Oh, young and, and he dealt with it, but that hurt. And, but he'll be all right. Wanted to walk off under his own power, took a couple of steps, and then had to lean on Al Collins to help get him off of the floor. It's a quick alert decision. The officials got a timeout immediately. And while he had a timeout, hey, get over here. Let's talk to you. Let's get right. something done. Don't worry about that end of it. We got 235 left in this game. We're down three. You don't need to sort of nurse your teammate at this point. He'll be all right. U High has the ball. They also have a three point lead. Big possession right here because it's going to either be a six point lead, five point lead at or this point, or come boom. the other way and maybe have a tie game. There you go. And uh, right now, you want to make Madison climb uphill to try to get back into this game. They have not been that uh, fluent on the offensive end of things in this part of the game. Jeremy Stanton has the ball. Let's see if he goes one on one. Goes into the free throw circle, looks around. That pass was nearly tipped off, and instead it's going to be a foul on Clifford Burris. That's his fourth personal foul. And you notice that uh, when he threw the ball out there, he made his teammate come to get it, and that's why the foul was put. Watch this play. He's caught with it, but he throws it out far enough where your teammate have to come and get that and meet the basketball, and the defensive man is on the back of the offensive ball player. That is something you just cannot coach. You can try to put it out there, but you have to exercise that and execute it in no situation. He lost his dribble to begin with. And that was a key play. You know, Dirks has not hit a free throw clean in this entire game. Every one of them has been rattling around up there. He's been trying to wish them in, and every one of them has. And you know what? The one on the back end of the last time he went up was a swish. 
He kind of put it in there, but he, he rattled the first one, then he came back in that second confidence factor, like now probably. Not at all. Missed there the second go. one. Boy, we've got a lot of left-handed shooters in this game, Norm. No doubt about it. A ton of them. Valentine, he's been very effective. He didn't get two there. Rebound pulled down by Jones. 2-14 remaining. New high leads by four. Uh, Stanton got that elbow up there a little bit, got away with it. Uh, he's, he knows what to do with it. And, uh, did it in such a smooth manner, he didn't get the call. Let's see how long New High waits before they try and pull the trigger. Dirk's looking inside. Looks like they might be trying to clear something out to get it to Stanton. Now Stanton comes over with the ball. That would be the wise thing. Just clear him. This is the man to man Madison's in. They have to be that way. I just clear the court and let Stanton go to work, but he tried to come up the trapping. This is the value of Stanton. You get him the ball, and he can quarterback and he can make good decisions. Dirk's goes to the bucket. Had it knocked out of bounds by Alvin Valentine. Good defensive effort, and you better get a timeout to talk this because it's winding down, buddy, and we got to do something about it. 135 remaining here in the fourth quarter. U High leads by four, and they have the ball. Anytime. Fight back. Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen, but it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. Not today. Thank you, Pepsi Club. We saw Brandon McGirt go out of the game with an ankle injury a moment ago. Yvonne Simmons has an update. Yep, the trainer said that as a precaution, they're going to take an x-ray, make sure it's not a fracture, but he's probably done for the day. So, Norm, I'm sorry, you were wrong there. Youth does play a part of it, but they're going to take a look at it. Well, he's going to be uh, responding a lot better than I would, because it'll take me months to get myself together on one of those. That's just called age. And from where McGirt grabbed his ankle, usually when you see somebody grab their ankle right around the joint, a lot of times it's a sprain. But McGirt, unfortunately, was clutching his ankle a little higher, and that could mean trouble. It's not swollen yet as I look here, and that, that to me is a sign that uh, it may just be just that burst, and he can't come back right now, but it might be all right by tomorrow. So. Well, he'd like to have the opportunity for them to have to make a decision whether or not he gets to play tomorrow. But right now, his teammates down by four. Big you possession right here. Inbounding the ball. Let's see if they go to the foul. Bradley has the ball, gives it off for Stanton. Remember, there is no shot clock in high school hoop. So you high can hold it. Yeah. Now, Bradley is not a shooter. And I double team away from Bradley as far as once it goes and try to do something. But he's an excellent ball handler, and that's just as valuable at this point. Boy, that was a hard foul right there. The foul goes on Tywansley Patton. Now, you may be asking, why didn't they foul Bradley? Bradley's a 69% free throw shooter. And I tell you, that that that's foul was maybe not intentional, but it was a, definitely a hard foul. But you're not getting any bonus with Brandon Dirks on the line. He's 66% in the season. He's 5-6 and six in the game. But something that you should always keep an eye on is how has a player done recently from the foul line? He missed his last free throw. Or, and I know they don't do uh, any. The basis of keeping stats uh, this uh, deeply is what a player does down the last couple of minutes of a game right when it's on the line. We get a timeout called the 114 remaining in the fourth quarter. U High continues to lead by four. It's 60 56. And maybe the free throws of the season coming up for both U High and Madison. And no doubt about it. What this can do if you extend out and make both these free throws is that you have to need uh, two field goals to get. Uh, Three pointers, I should say, to get back in the game. And you should like to extend that out to that. And they have not been Madison that hot in shooting the outside shot at this point. And University has done a very good job in taking that shot away from the first part of this game. Boy, they were just bombing outside and they were moving the ball well to get it done. And if you have to talk about players who have had outstanding games in this one, I think, Norm, you really have to go to Jeremy Stanton. He's come up big. He has 22 points in the game so far, but the question is, is it enough? Well, right now, you got time. It may be enough, but there's time. And time uh, and what you do with this minute 14 seconds is going to be very, 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 very crucial for whoever is going to play again tomorrow. Both teams long since in the bonus. High has the ball. Both teams have a couple of timeouts left. 
Jeremy Stan knows what it's like to win the final game of the season and would like to experience that one more time before he moves on to college. McGirt goes to the check that Dirks is going to go to the free free throw line five of six in the game so far. <laughs> Every time, Gorn. <laughs> yeah, he's got the roll. But they, you know, they tell you in the circles of shooting free throws, that is the perfect free throw. The front lip of the rim and goes in. It's not like a putt where you want to knock it two feet by the hole. Mm -hmm. Shot that with a lot of confidence and came back from that timeout and can both. Well, you look at a guy who's having a game. It's Dirk, seven of eight from the foul line. Long jump around the way. That wouldn't go. Valentine got a hand on it. Baker got it back. Three pointer. That won't go. Rebound pulled down by Bradley. Just He'll pull points. it out. One minute left. Baker fakes the shot from the foul line, goes up. That one's going to be short. Baker's going to get the rebound and in. It's a four point lead for you high. Baseline jumper, and that one goes in. Taiwan's Lee Patton got the bucket, and very quickly. There was a six point lead, and now it's a four point lead. That's why they were looking for that three, and why you needed to do that. Just get the two points and play the D. Al Collins takes a timeout. His team trailing by four. We're under a minute to go in the fourth. Country Companies knows that starting a family is no small feat. So the least we could do is start giving you a break with mini rates on most minivans. When it matters most, the country's behind you. You high leading by four, 62-58. We're under a minute to go. Madison just hit a bucket to get it down to a four point lead. So the strategy would seem to be now to have you high get the ball in bounds and then commit a foul and put them back on the line. Well, that's what they have to do if they want to even deal with it. They got to get a foul and try to make something happen from there. And our player of the game, Jeremy Stanton. Why is he the Wendy's player of the game? Well, as he did, 24 points, 8 of 18 from the field, made a couple of big steals, and Hanging up in the rafters here at Carver Arena is the number of one of Bradley's greats and one of Norm's teammates, Ch Chet the Jet. One of the best ever to play that game. Quick step in that forward position, unreal. And the foul is committed by Valentine. That's his third personal foul. Stanton had the ball, he'll go to the line. I had a cousin played on that great Bradley team with Chet, Lonnie Sheldon. I know Lonnie was your cousin. Yeah. Ernie, I mean, I mean, Mel McMillan, I'm sorry, McMillan, I'm sorry, and uh, Ernie McMillan, who played with the Cardinals. I had Seattle on my mind, but anyway, that, uh, <laughs> Ernie, Lonnie, and these guys, uh, well, some of Chicago's greats. Well, some of the best to ever play the game have applied their trade here at Peoria and state tournament here for the second year. Community is just great in supporting the tournament. Everywhere you go, you get somebody offering to help you out. Where uh, do you need to go? It's been fun. Oh, it's been a arrive. Did a great job here in Florida. I'd like to see that wind die down a little bit in between walks to the building. Two missed free throws by Stanton, but Uhi gets the rebound. Stanton gets the ball back, and mm. the foul committed again. 43 seconds remaining. Uhi's lead is four. The foul is called on Demond Sims. That's his second. Wow, was that rebound big? Mr. Bradley, huh? <laughs> Smallest man out there. They got the wrong guy on the free throw right. Well, he, I thought they called a foul before he passed it to him. Then again, no. That was right. Well, Stanton, I, I thought that was the right call. Yeah, but but yeah. now, Jeremy Stanton has missed three free throws in a row, and you can see the exasperation on his face. Well, it's the opportunity, but it means nothing unless uh, Madison gets the rebound and come down here and make something happen. Well, the thing now is it's a two possession game no matter what, and it's not two threes. A five point lead, 63 58. Three pointer on the way off balance, that won't go. Jones came away with the rebound. Stanton got away from Bradley. Stanton brings it down the floor. Nice look at the baseline. Ball goes up, it won't go down. Brandon Dirks was hammered. He'll go to the foul line. And remember, he's seven of eight so far in the game. And yeah, watch this replay. This, look at the speed this young man has. Man, he just outran everybody, dribbling. No look to the other side. Or I should say, look, he can call off, penetrated to the middle. I thought maybe, just in the thinking of being a point guard myself, he was going to pull up and dribble back outside and keep it himself and he not even try for the layup. But he had the numbers and he went for it. 
two big free throws here. It goes to a three possession game if he can hit. Boy, I tell you, you're talking about big time free throw shooting at the end of this game. Guys from Madison seeing it slip away. Right now they're down by six. And I tell you what, you can really play compliment to taking the outside shot away early and getting momentum that way because early Madison peppered everything from outside. Valentine three wouldn't go. Rebound pulled away by Dirks. Get the ball to Stanton. He'll move it up the floor very quickly. Hubbard had to wait for it. Should have made a pass and he did. And Jones went for the jam. Didn't get it but he'll get an opportunity from the foul line. Foul committed by Taiwan's Lee Patton. Oh man look at this ball movement. Up bang out. Let's try for the jam. Give it to my teammate. He was getting ready to jam that. I'll tell you what, it was a very impressive comeback and come from behind victory for University High if indeed they maintain this lead with 17.4 seconds left. Kevin Jones hits the free throw. And free throws down the stretch run here for University. It's definitely the big difference because they've hit more than they missed, even though Stan missed about two or three in a row. It hurt a little bit, but it's pad the lead for them. 66-58. Baker for three. That one rattled in and out and knocked out of bounds. Jones last touched it. 9.5 seconds remaining. So it certainly appears that U High has set themselves up on a date with Spring Valley Hall in the semifinals tomorrow morning. And Al Collins' team, they fought valiantly, but it's just not their day. And that missed dunk shows you about everything you need to know. Kevin Bradley puts it back in, makes it a 66-60 game with 4.5 seconds remaining. Madison will use their final timeout. It would take uh, a miracle of Aaron plays on the part of you. It would take high to to, to well, it would let take this game slip away. An inbounds pass, a steal, a quick three, a time. Well, they don't have a timeout now, and then it would take another inbounds pass, a steal, and a quick three. Possible? But yeah, I know. Let me tell you something. I was in part of a game like that against Portland back in I want to say '77 before we played them in the playoffs, which was good. We lost like a six-point lead. And I'd say about eight something like seconds left. But it's a step in bounds. You get the ball underneath. They scored. Clock stops automatically in the pros. I think it was another turnover immediately thrown in. They scored. I think Lionel Hollins hit a shot to tie to go into overtime or something like that. Everybody in uh, Carver Arena are going to run out and get a little dinner, and then everybody's going to come back here for session number two. The other two quarterfinal games coming up later on tonight. You can see them on Sports Channel Plus beginning at 6.30. Check with your local programming provider about the availability of Sports Channel Plus in your area. Yeah, that, that plus we used to fight over, I keep telling you. I want the plus. No, you want the plus. Well, you ain't getting the plus. We used to send Billy and I on the road a couple times for those plus games. <laughs> Why not? Good trip to St. Louis and a good trip to Detroit. Just another plus in the coverage. So they need a steal and a quick three. Madison does. Inbound pass to Bradley. He's fouled, and that foul will be charged to Clifford Bullet Burris. So he fouls out. 3.2 seconds remaining. And really, it appears to be all over but the shouting for you high. I'm uh, most impressed with the coaching and the, the play and the sportsmanship of these two teams that have played today. And so so many times we dwell on a negative with athletes. I like to seriously bring out in the amateur sport of high school basketball the positive of just playing good old solid hard basketball. Dan Bradley is going to get an opportunity from the foul line to put his name into the scorebook. Good game by Stanton as he gets a hand as he leaves the game. And Andy Hinthorn comes into the game for U High. So he will be able to say, I played in the state quarterfinals. No doubt about it. Bradley hits the free throw. Joel Serby will also come into the game. He broke his ankle early in the year. He's just a sophomore. His coach says, I really like what this guy's got to bring. I'll tell you the guy at a turning point also, the underline is the fact what Nick Anderson did, a crucial part of his game. He had two bombs from the corner. To really, really keep the lift 
and the momentum going for this basketball team, University High. Lance McMillan comes into the game. You know what? And with, look at Lance McMillan's face. That tells you everything you need to know about this tournament. He's getting in, getting a chance to play. And he'll be one of the key players for U High in the coming years. But today, the key players for University High, Jeremy Stanton. He was our Wendy's player of the game. But don't forget about what Brandon Dirks did from the foul line in the game. Nine for ten from the foul line. U High wins it by a final score of 68-60 over the Madison Trojans. So University High advances. They'll play Spring Valley Hall in the semifinals tomorrow morning. And for Madison, a great season ends up a little short of where they want it to be. But as time wears on a little bit, these guys look back and say, you know, we had a, we had a great run, didn't we? We got a long way in the tournament. Just came up short in the quarterfinals. Let's go over to Yvonne. She's standing by with head coach Cal Hubbard. Coach Hubbard, um, you said we're here because Jeremy Stanton carried us. What an outstanding game he had today. Uh, I thought our team had a very good second half. Uh, first half, we were a little shaky. I think we were nervous, but I thought our big kids stepped up really well on the boards. Uh, defensively, we did a much better job in the second half of running everything to the outside and slowing the ball down and giving them tough shots. And, uh, you know, we got into double bonus finally, and uh, that was that was really good because we actually made some free throws. Yeah, and foul shooting really was the story in the second half with everybody getting the fouls, and you guys made it with the exception of Jeremy Sand, the last few that he made. But, you What's know, you guys. What's going on with that, anyway? <laughs> you know what? It's the pressure, right? I, I don't think so. I don't think pressure bothers Jeremy. Uh, he must have been uh, thinking about what we're, where we're going for supper or something. <laughs> you have to savor this but win, but let's get down to business. You take the first glance at Hall. What do you think about them? Uh, I hadn't even thought about Hall. I've been so uh, focused on Madison. I know they're, I know Hall from, I used to be in the conference. And they're good, tough, hard-nosed kids. Um, and they play very good man to man. They got an excellent coach. They got excellent guards. They're going to be they're going to be a handful. But I'm glad we're still playing. Well, congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much, Jim and Norm. Back to you. 21 hours is all Cal Hubbard has to do to prepare for Spring Valley Hall. Jeremy Stanton, an outstanding game, and this was when the game was still tight. Here was the key play of the game, our Pepsi play of the game, the bucket and the foul by Jeremy Stanton. He was hit hard, but. Boy, what strength he showed. Uh, no doubt about it. Thin, lean, but mean. That's my man. And that is our Pepsi play of the game. Our final score, University High 68, Madison 60. We'll be back. Close it out here from Carver Arena right after this timeout. I Pepsi. Nothing else is a Pepsi. Country companies insurance when it matters most to countries behind you. And by Wendy's. Supporting excellence in high school students through the Wendy's High School Heisman. Jackie, what are you guys doing here? See the dude. Be the dude. Tense than slamming a dude. The things that you hold close, we do too. Sharing your dreams, seeing you through. Right tomorrow's human sorrows. It's nice to know when it matters most, the country's behind you. Life being what it is, ensure some peace of mind with safe and sound car insurance. It's affordable. It's for people just starting out on their own. And it's from the country companies. Wendy's 99 cent crispy chicken nuggets are very hard to resist. Where are my nuggets? Oh, I, I think Dave took them. Where's my nugget? Dave. Wendy's crispy chicken nuggets, five juicy pieces of all white meat. Just one of the 10 delicious choices on Wendy's 99 cent super value menu. Who ate my nuggets? Normal University High advances to the semifinals. They'll play Spring Valley Hall to try and advance into the next round. Madison goes home after falling 68-60. Norm, the thing that impressed me the most about both these teams is their level of preparation, their level of poise, and I think rather than dwell on the fact that Normal U High won this game is the fact that we saw two teams compete hard and play very, very well.